everybody. Today we're going to talk about how Jesus' power helps us live forever. Yep, today's totally true Bible story is one that I love because it completely changed my heart. <laughs> and I can't wait to share it with you. This is because you're my friends. You are. <laughs> but you're not just my friends. You're friends with God, too. And the Bible says that God gave you brains, blood, bodies, bones. He gave you everything. So let's celebrate you, awesome creatures. God made you and me and Avery and everybody who helped us film this segment and to be, to be loved and to live with him forever. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people believe that we can win and earn and achieve and do enough to make God love us and to be his friend. So for instance, they try to spend the most money or buy the, the, the fanciest car to show how much God, they love God. I have to have the best car so God knows I love him. That sounds a little wacky to me. <laughs> <laughs> but if Jesus had a trophy or even a blue ribbon, it would be for showing God's love to people. And no one else seemed to notice. Jesus would get first place in healing people. He would get first place in walking on water. I tried that once, and all I got was a towel. <laughs> Jesus would win at calming storms. And feeding crowds of hungry people. By the way, is it snack time yet? Uh, not yet, Avery. Soon. So the Bible was filled with stories full of all the wonderful things that Jesus did. And did you know that he was the very best at praying to God? Even Jesus' closest friends, the disciples, wanted to know how to pray. So the disciples were with Jesus all the time, and they could see how he prayed, but they weren't exactly sure how they should do it themselves. So they asked him, teach us how to pray. So Jesus gave them the Lord's Prayer. Hey, I know that prayer. I say it every day, twice on Sundays. Overachiever. So, <laughs> we make sure that you say, that he's, um, that, let's see, overachiever. So, <laughs> Jesus told them what they needed to do to pray. So even if you don't have the right words, God knows what you mean without using fancy words. And Jesus also said you shouldn't show off. So he told them you need to do four things. Give him your needs. Give him thanks. Praise him. And tell him what you're sorry for. So in the Gospel according to Matthew 6, 9-13, through 13, Jesus told them exactly how to pray. This prayer is sometimes said with old-timey words, so let's go through it and try to explain what everything means so that you know what you're talking about when you go to church on Sunday or when you're praying at home, and you'll understand all the words. Well, our Father seems easy enough to understand. Yes, we make sure to say he is our Father because we're all children of God. We pray for his mercy or forgiveness for, on all of us, not just for ourselves. Which art in heaven. Art is God's nickname. No, Avery. <laughs> In this prayer, art means to be or exist. Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> this is a reminder that we pray to God, the God who lives in heaven, our God. Next we say, hallowed be thy name. Oh, I know this part. Hallowed means holy or respected, and thy is an olden word for you, obviously. Name is what you call someone. Right. That's like saying, we respect you, God. The next part is where we hope to, about where we hope to end up. Okay? It's heaven. We know it's a pretty awesome place, so we, we try to live on earth the way we want to live there. And this is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, this is always confusing to me because I always think of will as something's going to come after that. But will, in this case, means something a little bit different. It means desire or thing that you want done. Okay? So, thy kingdom come, that part's tricky too. Because it's Bible time words, so let's think of an example. Um, like when you listen to a weather report and the weather person says, come Friday, we'll have sunny weather. That means that on Friday, you should expect sunny weather. Okay? So, um, let's see, and done means the way things are completed, mm -hmm. all right? So, when we pray that part, it's like saying, all your wishes will be completed on earth, just like they are in heaven. It reminds you that you should be living on earth the way you'd like to live in the kingdom. 
That's pretty accurate, Avery. You're getting really good at this praying stuff. <laughs> okay, so next up we have, give us this day our daily bread. And that means to really give us everything that we need. Like, we don't need to have video games. We don't need to have devices, and we don't need toys. But we do need food, water, and shelter, so is that what Jesus meant by bread? Things we do need to have? Yes, Avery, and more. So bread can be a metaphor or a figure of speech about God's words and for Jesus. And in the explanation that he gave, that he is the bread of life, okay? In John 6, 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. That is amazing. I will never look at a sandwich the same way again. <laughs> Avery, something tells me it's almost time for lunch. <laughs> All right. So next, we're going to be t um, asking for forgiveness. All right, this part's a little tricky, too, because these are some words that we don't usually say, especially when you're kids. All right. So in the next part, we're asking for sorry, something that we're sorry that we've done. Um, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is the part of the prayer where we're asking forgiveness for our mistakes. Have you ever heard anyone say, you need to own up to your mistakes? Yeah, well, that means that you need to... Um, you know, kind of admit that you've done something wrong, okay? All right. And then I want to tell you, there's another word you could use. You, some people use the word trespasses here. And trespasses is also the same thing. It, it's also something that means a mistake. Mm -hmm. Either one is fine with God. Okay, so when we ask for forgiveness, it means we're sorry for something we've done but we have to forgive those who've wronged us before we can ask God to forgive us? Yes, that's right. Sometimes others hurt us very badly, so we need to ask God to ask for forgiveness for them because forgiving someone is not always easy, but it's what God wants. Just like in Matthew 6, 14, 15, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Hmm. And Jesus said this immediately te after teaching the, this um, prayer to the disciples. It's literally the next lines in the Bible. Hmm. Got it. Next up. Lead us and not. lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay. So this is like a uh, temptation. It's a t tricky, tricky word. Mm -hmm. Temptation is something you just can't resist. Like... Maybe it's an extra three helpings of dessert. But three helpings of dessert isn't good for you. I mean, you'll probably get a huge tummy ache afterwards. And God doesn't want your tummy to hurt. <laughs> wow, I couldn't imagine eating three desserts. Well, I could, but it wouldn't feel good. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. The Yeah, let's pause where we were. Okay. okay. <laughs> And, in other words, you could pray and help me decide to do things that are good choices, but also help me turn away from bad things that could hurt myself or other people. And that sounds good. So, um, this part. But deliver us from evil. You know what deliver means? Oh, it's like when the pizza man comes to your house with the pizza. No, not in this case. I mean, you're right. Delivery man does bring your pizza. But in this case, it means um, help us to not make that decision. So help us not make a decision to do evil. Because evil can hurt you and other people. Mm -hmm. So this part, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. How would you say that in easy words? Hmm. I think that I'd say I'm asking God to stop me from doing things that could hurt me or others. That's good. That's a good summary of that. So next is this last part. All right, this one is a section that is not always said by every, every person in every church. For instance, my mom doesn't say it in her church, but at my wedding she said it along with my husband's family out of respect for them because she did know it, she just doesn't say it at her church. So it was really nice of her to include it. It goes, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. All right, so thine 
It's kind of like thy. Mm -hmm. So what does thine mean? Thine is yours and thy is your. Yes. So thine is the kingdom. So that means, so yours is the kingdom and the power. That's your strength. The glory is, I would say, mm, your wonderfulness, your spirit, your awesomeness. <laughs> What's forever mean? <laughs> forever means all time, as long as you're alive and long after that. <laughs> so this last part, how would you say it in easy ways? Hmm. <laughs> Yours is the place I want to be, mm -hmm. and you're powerful, and you're wonderful forever. Amen. <laughs> hey, I know that part. That oh. means so be it. <laughs> nice. Hey. So now that we know this prayer, let's pray it together. Our, Our Father, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And that's how Jesus' power has helped us live forever, even when it's upside down. Jesus' power wouldn't change even if he was upside down. <laughs> You're right. <laughs>